Hi, this is Jason from Horrific Nightmares. Welcome to another episode of What's in the Bag, Jay? Now this is the segment where I pick six movies from my collection that I haven't seen, write their names on a piece of paper, throw them in the bag, draw one out at random, and do a review. Now they all came back from last week, so let me remind you, we have Ill, Final Contagion, Vampire Over London, Violent Midnight, The Jonestown Haunting, All Hallows Eve 2, and making its debut this week is Horrific. Now let's see Horrific Nightmares. Review Horrific. How about that? So we all know what comes next. I'm going to give the bag a good tussle, and we're going to see what we're going to watch this week. All right. Let's see what we got. We have Violent Midnight. So I'm going to set this aside while I sit all the other movies side by side by side. Take my trusty Freddy vs. Jason die, and we're going to see what comes back next week. Remember, if I roll a Freddy vs. Jason or a five, they all come back. Two. Interesting. Let's give the bag another good tussle. Let's see what's coming back. We have All Hallows Eve 2. And we have Ill, Final Contagion. So, if you guys want to see me review Vampire Over London, The Jonestown Haunting, or see Horrific Nightmares JM, review Horrific. <laughs> Definitely vote, and I'll consider bringing them back. But right now, I'm going to go watch Violent Midnight and come back with a review. Later. Well, I'm back. I just watched Violent Midnight, a.k.a. Psychomania, and here are my thoughts. Now, Violent Midnight is a 1962 film, which there is some discrepancy in that, but I'll get to that later. And it runs 93 minutes. And is written and directed by Richard Hillard. Now, unfortunately, he passed away on August 17th, 2012, at the age of 83. He did The Playground, The Lonely Sex, and Wild Is My Love. Now, this stars Lee Phillips as Elliot Freeman. Unfortunately, he passed away on March 3rd, 1999, at the age of 72. He had done tons of TV, but he was, I think, most notably a director. He had a lot more credits as a director. This also stars Shepard Studwick as Adam Bennett. Unfortunately, he passed away on January 15th, 1983, at the age of 75. He was in Slaves, Daring Game, and tons of TV. And finally, Jean Hale as Carol Bishop. She was in In Like Flint, The Oscar, and tons of TV. Now this also had a small part, small, small to moderate part, by Dick Van Patten, who was basically my... okay... It was said that Bill Cosby was the father of the 80s. Um, we all know what happened with that. Uh, unfortunately, well, fortunately, Dick Van Patten was the father of, like, the 70s with 80s Enough and stuff like that. Um, he was basically my generation's kind of father that you looked up to. Um, he was actually, this was actually his film debut. Now, here's where the discrepancy comes in. Uh, the film 
was said to have actually come out in 1963. And even though it says it was 1962, there is no proof that it actually came out in 1962, which sounds weird, but yeah. And the budget was $42,000. All right. Violent Midnight. Or Psychomania. Depending on what you want to call it. Psychomania is a bit confusing because there already is a motorcycle horror film by the name of Psychomania. I have a feeling that's why they changed it. Now, of course, this is two or three years, depending on how you look at it, after Psycho and after Peeping Tom. And this is basically a slasher, or what they call a proto-slasher. In the very beginning of the film, this is it's kind of a complicated story, too. In the beginning of the film, you have a family that's going out hunting pheasants. I believe it's pheasants. And there is an accident where the father gets killed. Is it an accident? You don't know until further on in the film. But it takes place a little while later when one of the sons of the father who was killed in a hunting accident, he is on the verge of becoming a famous artist. And he is painting a model in the home of his family. Now, it's basically a retreat for him. There's no furniture. He's there just to paint and, you know, get his head together. A while later, his sister comes into town. Now, he calls it his half-sister, which becomes very important in the film. The model that he is working with is brutally murdered. And this kind of plays out like a giallo, although you can't call it a giallo because... It doesn't have, it's not made in Italy, and it doesn't have an Italian director. So, technically it's not a giallo, but it fits all the tropes. It has the black gloves, the slashing implement, um, the overcoat, you know, the whole, um, the whole ten yards. So, the sister comes in to see the brother, the half-sister, and there are some more murders around town. Meanwhile, a bunch of other stuff happens that doesn't... I mean, it plays into the film, but it kind of seems like padding in a way. I'm not sure if they actually knew what they wanted to do with this film, ultimately. Because it seems like there's a bunch of different things going on that, that have a different impact on the film itself. There's some comedy elements. There's some like kind of teenage... Um, like Animal House sort of events that happened in the house. It sounds weird, but you'd have to see it in the context of the movie. Because a, a murder happens very early on in the film, and then another one doesn't occur until much, much later. So it's kind of a slow burn where there's a lot of padding. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Now, what did I think of the film? Um, overall, I really enjoyed it. Like I said, this is a slasher movie with a very low body count, and it is kind of a slow burn. So just keep that in mind if you do want to watch this film. It's a little hard to, ex to explain the film itself because it goes in a bunch of directions that I don't, I don't know that it necessarily needed to, but it did keep me fairly entertained throughout the entire film. And um, I did enjoy it, so yeah. If you want to see a early slasher movie or proto slasher, I don't like to use that term, but I guess that's what most people do. Then give this one a shot. Um, in no way, shape, or form is it as good as Psycho or Peeping Tom, but it does have a lot to offer. So take that for what it's worth. Again, everything comes back. I do believe. Or only two come back. But anyway, vote for your favorite, and I will consider bringing them back. And if you like what you're seeing here, hit that like button and subscribe. And until next time, peace.